so easy, healthy, quick, delicious. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. Today, we are gonna make a healthier version of spaghetti and zoodles. So we're gonna use zucchini noodles in place of the regular pasta, so we're gonna make this a little bit lower carb. And I'm also gonna use turkey just to keep it a little bit healthier, but you could substitute ground beef, a combination, sausage, whatever you want. It's perfectly fine to use, or you can omit it all together and make this vegetarian. That would be fine as well. So, but I have one pound of ground turkey, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Ninja Foodi, hit the sear saute, and hit the start button. And actually, this is like a pound, pound and a quarter maybe, because that's how the package comes, so that's fine. A pound, a pound and a quarter, perfectly fine. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add in about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. Let that get hot and then I will put in my turkey to start to saute it. We wanna brown it up a little bit before we add the rest of the ingredients. But while that's heating up, let me go over the rest of the ingredients that I'm using. I have one cup of Vidalia onion that is just chopped up in probably a half of an inch dice. You can make them as big or as little as you like because it doesn't really matter. You know, it's to your preference. It won't, won't matter in this recipe at all. So if you like chunkier uh, onions, cut them bigger. And I have about a cup of green pepper, totally optional. You can leave it out, no problems at all. I have eight ounces of mushrooms. Now, I really like the mushrooms in this recipe. They add this heartiness and, oh, I, I don't know, they're just so good. But if you absolutely do not like mushrooms, of course you can leave them out. It's no problem whatsoever. Of course, if you leave everything out, then you're not gonna have much of a spaghetti sauce, right? And then I have one cup of just assorted cherry tomatoes. You could use all the all of the red kind. I just get them assorted in a pack and I, and I like to use those. I think they make it really pretty. Then I have my seasoning blend, which I will go over in just a minute. And I have two cans of fire roasted tomatoes. Each can is 14 and a half ounces. Six ounces of tomato paste that we're gonna put in there. That's gonna help thicken. Now, if you wanted to use spaghetti sauce instead of the fire roasted tomatoes, and instead of using the, the tomato paste, you would have to add some liquid to it um, because the tomato sauce might end up burning on the bottom. So you have to be careful with that, make some adjustments, maybe add another quarter cup of water in with your spaghetti sauce and see how it goes for you. I have not tested the recipe that way because I just, I don't wanna get the burn notice, right? Or the water notice. All right, so let's get over here to the garlic because I know some people are gonna be like, what? I have two bulbs of garlic, but this is roasted garlic. It is not straight up from you know a bulb of garlic that you would get that's raw. This has been roasted. And I will link to that video right up there so you can see how easy it is. This does not add that pungent garlic flavor to your sauce. This adds a nice, sweet, mild garlic. That's why we're gonna use two full bulbs. However, if you wanted to use minced garlic instead, I would use probably two to three uh, teaspoons would be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and get this turkey right in there. I'm gonna break it up just a little bit. All right, while that sits and sautés, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my onions my green peppers, my mushrooms. I have two teaspoons of sea salt, two teaspoons of basil, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning in here. And I have a half of a teaspoon of the crushed red pepper flakes. I love to add those, but you don't have to. So if you don't want any spice, just omit those. It's perfectly fine. All right, we're gonna let that saute for a few minutes. And just to get the, the turkey starting to brown up, it doesn't have to be completely brown. I'm not gonna use the mix and chop because I just realized I'll be chopping up my mushrooms a little bit too much if I use that. So I'm just gonna use my other little tool here just to kind of move it around. Now, we will not be deglazing the bottom of the pot 
in this recipe. We don't have any liquid. There's no, you know, chicken stock, nothing like that, or your sauce would be way too thin. We are gonna use the tomatoes, but it's not really that thin of a liquid, but it's enough with the cup of tomatoes that will break down under pressure. It is enough to keep us under pressure without the burn notice. So because we're not gonna be really deglazing in the true sense with a thin liquid, you wanna make sure that you scrape off the bottom of the pot after you're done sauteing so that none of that meat is stuck to the bottom, which would cause the water notice. All right, so let me get to finishing up our zoodles. Now, this has been a work in progress. So because I thought at first, how am I gonna do this as like a 360 meal? How am I gonna actually put the zoodles on top? and pressure cook and not overcook the zoodles. This was a real dilemma because I tried a couple of different things. Um, I did a five minute pressure cook and it, the noodles were just over, zoodles I should say, were just overcooked just a little bit. And then I did a three minute pressure cook and the seasonings weren't right. You know, the flavors did not have enough time to really, um, become blended in the sauce and it just did not taste that good. So I was like, well, that's not good enough either. So then I thought we're gonna go back to the five minutes of pressure cook time, but this time we're going to protect them with a little bit of foil. So I've got one zucchini already done here, already zoodled up. And then this little piece that didn't work, you know, I was done with it, couldn't really get any more zoodles out of it. I don't throw it away. I just chop it up and throw it in the sauce. That way we don't waste anything. Now, two zucchini is probably enough for four smallish servings, you know, or four average servings, I guess. Um, but it will not be enough if you wanted to try to feed six people. There's just no way. And I don't even think that it would be feasible to do all those zoodles in this pot, pot and pot, if you're gonna feed that many people. Even though the spaghetti sauce will feed people, uh, six people, um, I just don't think you're gonna get enough zoodles in there to do that. But if you wanted to try, skip the pan and put them on a couple of uh, pieces of foil so that you can protect them from the heat a little bit and then just stick them on top of the rack, see if they'll fit. All right, but two is fine because that gives Jeff and I uh, each two servings. So we'll have it for dinner one day and then lunch the next. And then I'll just make another, you know, another zucchini if we're gonna have the other, the other two servings. All right, so now I'm just gonna use my veggie strip maker, which I prefer over my spiralizer to do these zoodles because I like the shape of them. They are a little bit thicker, so they remind me more of a fettuccine noodle, less chances of overcooking them. And I just, I just love the way that they, they uh, are with any kind of a pasta. Pasta, listen to me. I was gonna say any kind of a pasta sauce, and that's true, any kind of a pasta sauce. When you don't wanna have the pasta. This is gonna look like so much. Wait till you see how much it shrinks down though. All right, let me just leave those over here so I don't make a mess on my counter. And then I'm just gonna cut these up. All right, I'm gonna give this a stir. and add in our seasonings. Now, one other thing that I add, which is just my personal preference, you do not have to use this, I add two teaspoons of sugar. I think it balances out the acid in the tomatoes and the heat from the red pepper flakes and just really gives you a well-balanced sauce. If you don't wanna use it, you certainly don't have to. I'm using a demerara sugar, a cane sugar, that's a little bit coarser, but you could use white sugar, you could use brown sugar, or you could even use a sugar substitute if you wanted. And you can even add it at the end. So if you wanted to taste it and then see if it needed a little bit of sweetness, you can certainly do that as well. This is already just looking so good. All right, now for the garlic. I'm just gonna squeeze this out. Get it right in there. Oh, 
All right. Now I'm just gonna go along the bottom. Some of the turkey meat is not all of the way cooked. That does not matter. It will finish cooking when we go under pressure, so we don't have to worry about that. Just making sure that everything is off the bottom of the pot, nothing sticking. We're gonna add in our tomatoes. Don't even need to cut them, just add them in. I like to get those down on the bottom of the pot because I really want them to burst open. All right, from here on out, we don't stir, okay? No stirring. Go ahead and dump in your tomatoes. And then right on top of the tomatoes, dump in your six ounces of tomato paste. And then I kind of smush that down a little bit so I can get the rack on top. But again, no stirring. All right, now we're gonna put the rack in the high position. So just nestle it down, make sure it hits the bottom so you've got enough room for your uh, pan. I'm using the six inch Fat daddy -O pan. Uh, I really like this. I do recommend if you're gonna do the zoodles on top that you have a thick walled pan. If it's really thin, the zoodles are gonna just overcook really quickly. And now I just push them in. You could season them with a little bit of salt and pepper if you wanted to before you put them in the pot, but I usually do that afterwards. All right, then we're gonna take some foil. I know some people do not do not like to use foil. If you didn't want the foil touching your food, put some parchment over it and then some foil. And then put that on top. As these cook down, this will come you know, sit flatter. And also, it, I'm just gonna get this little bit of tomato paste around the edge of the pot here that was stuck because that could impede the seal. So even though it looks like it's really high, it's gonna be fine. We can get the pressure lid on and as it cooks, it's gonna go down a lot. So wait till you see how, how little zoodles we end up with, really. All right, put the lid on. Turn the valve to seal. We're gonna go under pressure. We want to go for on high for five minutes. And hit start. Now it's gonna take just a few minutes to come to pressure because we've already got boiling liquid there. So I'm gonna say probably five minutes or so. And then we will pressure cook for five minutes. We will natural release for five minutes. And then we will release the rest of the pressure, stir our sauce and get our zoodles plated up and top it with some Parmesan cheese. All right, there we go. So we've got our zoodles, which I'm gonna grab out here. And we're gonna see if they worked out this time. We'll see if this worked. And I'm gonna go ahead and open them up right now. Oh, they look pretty good. They might be a little softer than I like. Yeah, a little softer than I like. Um, but then some of them aren't. So I think my extended time to pressure, um, what I think might have caused that, and I didn't go back on camera, I should have probably, is I think I had this too far back. So after about mm, seven or eight minutes of it not coming under pressure, like I didn't see any movement in the pan, went ahead and opened it up and pushed that forward. Because whenever you put a pan on top of the rack, you need to make sure it clears the back end so that the a valve, the little, um, pin can move around freely. So I think that was part of my problem because I've tested this and you know, it should have, the noodles should not have been that done. So I think that was the issue. But anyway, you know, zoodles are really easy to make so you don't have to make them on top of the spaghetti. You could even stir them in. So if you just wanted them to be all together like we would with pasta, you could stir them in right now and just let them heat right in the sauce, that would be fine. Or you could just saute them in, in on the uh, stove. But anyway, it looks good and it smells really good. So let's go ahead and stir that tomato paste in. All right, so let's go ahead and get some zoodles on the plate. Like this one right here is perfect. 
but then there's some like around the edges that aren't. So I wonder if we took the pan and actually wrapped the whole pan in foil to protect it a little bit. But anyway, we tried, right? Actually, you know what, they're not bad. Some of them are a little bit softer than others, but really, they look pretty good actually. So you can do this if you want or you can saute them, your choice. All right, so let's get this nice thick sauce out here. I mean, look at this, it is thick, it is beautiful, it smells amazing. And I'm gonna grate some Parmesan cheese. Give it a taste. Might need to let it cool down a minute. Let's get a piece of this turkey. Mm. Really good. Wow. It's really good. I get a little bit of heat. Now, there's a little bit more acid than I like, so I would probably add in another little bit of sugar, but that's just my preference. But it tastes really amazing. Mm. So easy, healthy, quick, delicious. I hope you enjoy it.